Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, December the 14th, one of four graded stakes races carded at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Let's take a look at the field for race number nine, going a mile and an eighth on the turf. It's the $200,000 grade two Fort Lauderdale stakes. And you can access free formulator pass performances for this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Download them and handicap along with us. A very consistent runner is the morning line favorite. The number five channel Cat. He's had five triple digit buyer speed figures out of his last six races. He's dropping out of the Breeders' Cup turf and he's probably the horse to beat. Do you like him cutting back in distance or do you think he kind of found himself when they stretched him all the way out? I felt like he got better um, when they got more distance underneath him. That doesn't mean he can't handle the mile and an eighth in this race. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. I have no problem with this horse being the favorite, Dan. Um, he actually didn't even run that bad in the Breeders' Cup. So I, I get him as the favorite. I think he is the horse to beat, but he's not a horse I'm terrified to bet against. Now, he won the grade two Bowling Green earlier this year in gate-to-wire fashion. And that might bode well for him as we take a look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector. It's that rare gray bar scenario. No speed at all. Timeform U.S. believes this pace might be run at a glacial pace. And while Channel Cat did win that race gate-to-wire, in the uh, Bowling Green. That was at a very long distance of a mile and three eighths, hence last on the pace projector. I think he could be close. He, he could be closer than that. I, you, listen, I don't expect him to be on the lead in this race, but I don't know if I expect him to be last either. And I'm not sure I expect and still regard to be in front. That's the number four. And I'm not sure I expect Marzo to be outright on the lead. We were talking before we went on the air. Listen, up the ante's tactical speed is his greatest asset. Yeah. And I think the six up the ante, he's the one that's likely going to try to make the front. That's how I looked at it too, especially he's got an aggressive rider on his back as well. I don't know. I felt like up the ante had a real chance to make the front in here, but I won't argue too hard with the pace projector. I mean, still regards kind of tactical. Marzo's he's shown tactical speed as well, so we'll see how it all plays out. The number one exalting is your typical Mike Maker. They took him for 62.5 in his next start. He won a quarter of a million dollar race. The Oakland Mile Maker improves horses off the claim. It's been kind of tough sledding in his recent starts on the turf. His most recent race at Churchill Downs, he ran to a solid field. I think we know Renaissance yeah. Frolic though. He's really not a graded stakes mm -hmm. caliber kind of horse. Exalting did finish ahead of a horse that came back to run second in an optional claimer at the fairgrounds with a nine. 96 buyer, and he does have a little bit of tactical speed. He can stay close. He does. Um, I, you know, I'm a fan of this horse. I just, I don't think I like him that much as a turf horse, Dan, and I definitely don't like him going a mile and eighth. I think, he, I think he's a better horse on dirt going about a mile. Spooky Channel, interestingly enough, won a stakes race at a mile and seven eighths at Turf Paradise. He has shown ability at shorter distance, but like Channel Cat, he seems to have gotten better with longer. His last race, the grade three Arlington handicap, he was in against a razor sharp Bandua, who came back to one third in the Arlington Million with a 101 buyer speed figure. Ten starts. He's a likable horse. He's yeah. won six of them, but he's just too slow on paper. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm not that worried about um, his running style for this race. I would just wonder if he's, you know, good enough to go with horses like this. This is a tough spot for him. Flavius can easily improve second yeah. off a long layoff for trainer Chad Brown. This horse was a stakes winner in Ireland. Went to the sidelines for an extremely long time. Beaten favorite in the comeback. Lots of things worked against him in that race. Yeah, maybe they did. I mean, I feel it feels to me more than anything that he just needed a race off the long life. He did not break well from the gate, and he just took that inside trip under Castellano. He wasn't really, you know, finishing that hard in the stretch. It just looked to me like a horse who, who needed the race. I'm going to expect him to take a big step forward in here. I actually liked his first three starts over in Europe. I thought he ran well in all those races. Bullet workouts at Palm Meadows since that race at Aqueduct sort of hint that he's getting into his form. But do you think he's one of those just true, true Euro plotting types that doesn't have a lot of speed and could be up against? Or is it too early to tell? I think it's too early to tell. He didn't look like that kind horse over there. Their paces are different in the races they run over there. I, I feel like, again, I just think he needed that first start back. He's, to me, I think he's an actually a very fair price on the morning line. I'd be using him at anything around that six to one. And still regard the number four million dollar two-year-old in training purchase. Winner of the grade three LeCompte. Placed second in the grade one Low South Futurity. Both of those races on dirt. Fourth in the Kentucky Derby in 2018 okay. behind eventual Triple Crown winner Justify. This is a horse though having trouble reaching the winner's circle, but we go back to his most recent race. His first start off a bit of a layoff, take him home and still regard finishes just ahead of Flavius. Yeah, they're both down on the inside right now. Flavius and the Judd Monsilks is down right on the fence, and in still regards right next to him, and they're both driving in this race, in a race that's really not coming back to them. Um, and still regard obviously finishes better in this race. He's getting clear at the very end, and he's racing on. You can see Flavius is sort of punching on. He's just not really finishing that hard. 
Listen, I thought they both ran hard. If you tell me I could only use one, I'm going to use Flavius. I just don't know how much of a fan of Instilled Regards I am. You can make a case for both. You can simply yeah, say you can. Instilled Regard, listen, he's got more tactical speed in this race, and that gives him an advantage. And Flavius, well, he's going second off a longer layoff than Instilled Regard. He can be uh, expected to improve. Channel Cat's the horse to beat. He was seventh in the Breeders' Cup turf. He was in a bit tight early, and Luis Sainz had to kind of wrangle him mm -hmm. back out of there and lost position in the early portion of the race. Then he ended up four wide on the back stretch, six wide turning into the stretch, and with a perfect trip, he's not beating bricks and mortar, let's no. be honest. He was only beaten two and a half lengths. He's gotten good for Todd. I'm a little curious about the mile and an eighth. I know he's run well at shorter distances in the past, yeah. but like you, he just really improved by leaps and bounds when they stretched him out. It seemed like that was the key to him. They stretched him out, and he really appreciated having longer distances to work with, and it, and it improved his form. But again, I don't think the mile and an eighth you know, works way against him. Like He can't possibly win going this distance. He just makes a lot of sense in this race, Dan, but I'm going to bet somebody else. Conversely, do you think up the ante is going to find this mile eight just a little bit mm -hmm. too long for him? He's got excellent tactical speed. We think he makes the lead. If not, he's going to be sitting up close. He's coming off a career-best buyer effort at Laurel in the Grade three Baltimore Washington Turf Cup. Take him home. He's down on the inside in this race. He was he was a little further back, I thought, than maybe he he, he projected to be in this race. Um, and you're going to see him here getting between horses, and now he's right down on the fence here. He's racing on. He he actually runs pretty well in this race. If nothing else, this is a horse who um, I thought he was a little dressed up as a three year old because the races that he won were just when he absolutely walked on the slowest of paces. He still ran some good races, but I just didn't. I wasn't sure how good he was. It's taken him a while to get into form this year, but his last two races are definitely have him trending the right way. That's a good thing for him. And the horse that won the Baltimore Washington uh, Turf Cup Caribou Club, he came back and he ran just fine in the Artie Schiller at Aqueduct, second with a 99 buyer speed figure. We talked about Michael Maker's prowess. He has the seven cross border. All this horse has done is win one, two, three, four out of his last six races, six out of his last eight races, including this race at Aqueduct, going a mile and three eighths, where he got right up close to the pace. Mike and he's game in the lane. Yeah, he really is. This is a he was a, a big favorite to win this race, and I thought deservedly so going in. The horse on the rail gives him a real fight. That's a very lightly raced horse for Christophe Clement. Um, but you know, cross border is gonna get it done in this race. He, he's just in really good form, especially since Maker has taken over. Yeah, you, know, you can go back uh, two starts. I didn't know what he was doing in the turf classic, but he was in there and he actually wow. ran a deceptively good race in there. This horse is in great form right and now. And while we know that Maker likes to stretch horses yeah, out, he just has an eye for it, and we saw Another example of a horse winning at a mile and three eighths, running so well in the Turf Classic at a mile and a half. He does have very good races at a mile yes, and eight. Admission office, the number eight, is a horse I know you're a fan of. I'm a fan of. You needed him in this race, the Dixie on the Preakness undercard, and take him home. He's last on the rail. This trip just doesn't work out, but because he has no speed, it seems like he gets this trip every time. Yeah, this is the trip that he tends to get because he's just always going to be at the back of the pack early. He's down inside now, and he's really finishing gamely at the end of this race. That's Catholic Boy who's just hitting the front now. You can see admission officers flying up the rail late. It's a little too late. He's not going to get there. I thought he ran really well in here, Dan. And then he came back out of this race with a couple more sort of similar efforts to that. Just in a lot of traffic through the stretch, it, things didn't really work out for him. And I feel like that sort of was in Jose Ortiz's mind last time in the River City because he did not want to be down inside no like cover. that. And he didn't want to be that far back early. So he moved early and he came wide. And that probably worked against him in that race. So you're just between a rock and a hard place with a horse like Kim. You just have to hope the trip works out. But he does have talent and he's lightly raced yeah, enough as a four-year-old making his third start off of a spring layoff that if there is a little bit of pace, you have to expect that the yeah. source is going to be running at the end. Maker also has Marzo claim the source for 62.5. He won the grade three Sycamore two starts back, going a mile and a half. Last time out in the Red Smith, that, that trip just didn't work out for him. You know, that's how I look at it, too. Um, I think if you just look at the running line and then look at the short comment, you would think, well, they stepped him up into maybe a tougher race and he didn't really fire. I, I don't think that's the case at all. It looked like, to me anyway, I read Ortiz, he sort of had his hands full and he never got this horse into a comfortable spot. And then as they came into the stretch, I mean, he was just in a ton of traffic. Everybody was starting to make moves from the back of the pack on the far outside. And he was just down in there, you know, couldn't find room to run in tight. Once he came clear, he was empty. I just don't think he ran as poorly as it looks last time. And he's got great tactical speed. I think he's going to work out a better trip in this race. And he's reunited with Ricardo Santana, who is up for that Sycamore win. And he got him close to the pace. And I would expect him to break running from this outside yeah. post and to establish good position. We take a look at our top selections for the grade two Fort Lauderdale. 
giving him one more chance. Boy, he's just a trouble-prone and frustrating horse at times. Admission office, I think he's going to get bet a little bit off that 9-2 to two morning yeah, line. So. But I don't think he'll be the favorite with Channel Cat in this race. And remember, he was 6-1 to one on the Shadwell Turf Mile. I think a mile and an eighth also really works to his. Yeah, point. I do too. He gets one more chance for me. Eight five six four. Marzo ten to one on the morning line. Your top pick for the great maker. He's just too good a price in good form right now. And again, I do think his last race it's not as bad as it looks. I think this is a good spot for this horse, and he's the right price for me. You know, I hate to sort of get off admission office now since I've been chasing him, but um, I just can't keep betting him and, and watching him get those trips. You'll leave that to me. Yeah. Saturday race of the day <laughs> is the Grade Two Fort Lauderdale race number nine. Approximate post time. 4 o'clock Eastern. Best of luck.